So welcome back. Um, so we'll be today we'll be covering object detection. So this topic. So we have covered object recognition last week. So this week we'll cover object detection. First of all, we'll see what object detection means. What is the definition? And then we'll we'll look at two popular object detectors. One is called region-based convolutional neural networks, so RCNN. And we'll look at two versions of it, fast RCNN and faster RCNN. And we'll also look at another object detector, which is very famous, and that is YOLO. You only look once, this one. So we'll start with the definition. So what do we mean by object detection, or what is the task that we want to do? So here our goal is, so in recognition, we have assumed that the image has only one object, one foreground object. And we have to just label the whole image as that object. For example, tiger, cat, dog, whatever. But in general, we never get such an image, right? We'll, we'll get an image in which there are many objects. So the task is not just object classification, but also detection. So we should, for example, we can see there is a dog. So I should be able to detect, like localize where the dog is. Along with that, I would also like to classify. So it's like I would like to have a window, let's say rectangular window, around the object of interest, and also allocate or label that window, saying what is that object. So it is, for example, this is dog. So another could be cat, like that, duck. So this is what we want to do. So given an image, I want to find out what are all the objects and localize them, like find the coordinates or put a bounding box around it. And also we should say that bounding box, what object does it contain? So classify it. So basically find out all the objects, localize them and classify them. So which means that we need to have find all the bounding boxes and also corresponding labels. So this is the task we are. Now, how can we do it? So can we do it via means of image classification? So we have seen classification, right? So actually it can be done, like that is one of the ways in which traditional vision was done for object detection, that what you do is this sliding window approach. So you take this window and then you ask the question, is there these objects there or not? So we can decide on what are all objects of interest. And let's say for us these three, the, these, the, these are the three objects of interest. And then given that window, any window, we can ask whether that window contains a cat, dog, or duck. Basically, we do a classification. Take this window and just pass it through a classifier, which will give this three output. So you can also have another class, which is none of these objects. And that will have higher probability if none of the object is there within that window. But yes, the idea is that. So what you can do is take a window, and then we can ask what object is there within that window. And now we can just slide that window, right? Um, because uh, wherever we put the window, it, there may or may not be the object. So we need to slide it and scan. For example, in this case, we can see the cat is there. And like that, so, so like that. But the problem with this is that how many position and scales we need to test. So position means that you need to move the window around and all. And scale means that it's not just we can just take a fixed size window and move it, right? Because the objects can be at various scale. Some can be very small, some can be very large. For example, the duck is very small. So we cannot use the same size window for finding all the objects. So we have to not only, if, if, if we decide on the size of the window, we have to not only scan it throughout the image and each time ask the question whether there is object there and which object is there. But uh, the other thing is also we need to try out various scales and aspect ratio of window to find out all kinds of objects. So which means that this becomes a very, very huge problem, very like computational is almost not feasible. So still you can do it if your classifier is fast enough. But most of the deep learning that we'll do are not that fast also. So the thing is that, therefore, we want to do it in a better way. So we look at the first architecture that we look at is region-based convnets and its variations. So first, we'll look at the basic version. So let's say we want to do it with convnet, the same thing. So again, we can do the same thing, like we can do it as an image classification. So image classification means that we have this window and we'll slide it wherever the window is located, we'll pass it through a classifier. So I take this window, for example, 
so this window, the first window, and then I pass it through the classifier. Of course, you can resize this because uh, generally all these classifier requires a fixed size image as an input. So let's say if you are doing, I think this is AlexNet, so it has a size of 224 cross 224. So take the first window. If it is of not that size, just resize it such that it becomes 224 cross 224 and then pass it through the AlexNet and then get the output, whether there is object or not and which object is there. So, but only thing is you have to do it for all windows and all scales, which means very, very computationally, um, I mean, basically it's, it's become almost invisible. And especially when the comnets they are computationally demanding, right? We cannot test all positions and scale. So what the solution is to look at a tiny subset of position and also choose them wisely. So we cannot just try out all positions and scale, but somehow we should be able to select a few of them. So that is uh, that is uh, like the first step in this uh, RCNN. So what the idea is to find blobs that are likely to contain objects. So basically we are looking at some kind of, so this is a region proposal algorithms. There are many region proposal algorithms. One of them, is this, this particular RCNN is using. So it's more or less, it looks for blobs kind of things where there's more likely, for example, this is a blob, this is a blob. Blob means something which looks like circular, something like flowers and all. Some kind of feature detector which detects certain kind of shapes. And then based on that, it will think that there are objects and it will propose bounding boxes. So you can see that all the bounding box proposed are some meaningful objects, at least, at least in this image. So that is the first step. So we have some region proposal algorithm, which will propose some bounding boxes that will then do classification and not all positions and all scales. So that is the idea. So the first thing is you have this input image and then you extract region proposals. So which is basically, these are the regions which where we think that there could be objects. So there are 2000 such proposals. This one particular algorithm has been used which gives 2000 such proposals. And then we look at each of them. For example, this particular window. So we reshape it or warp it so that it goes to whatever size this CNN requires. And then we pass it through the CNN and then it classifies it into one of the classes. For example, in this case, it will be a person. So these are the steps that this RCNN follows. So it extracts these region proposals or windows, then pass it is through the CNN or compute CNN features and then classifies it. And then based on that, whichever regions have some valid classes, we'll say that person or those objects are detected. So that's the basic idea. So again, it's the same thing. So you have this input image. And then these are some of the regions of interest. We are also call it ROI, or regions of interest. So we will get 2,000 such regions of interest per image, let's say. And uh, once you get that, then you will warp it. Like you take any one of the, or basically you can parallelly process all these regions, regions of interest. So you'll warp it to the correct input size required for that particular CNN. And so this is what after warping, and then you pass it through the ConNet. So you compute the features and then you classify it. So the way they were doing it, that RCNN, so slow RCNN means the original RCNN algorithm because the other algorithms will be faster. So, so that's why this adjective slow has been used. Actually, it is the original RCNN. So what it does is it computes this feature, ConNet features, and finally it has a SVM, support vector machine. So which is an additional classifier, right? So when you're training this ConNet, this SVM will not be there. So at that time, you train it with log loss. So there are some, or softmax. Using those losses, you train the network. And then finally, um, but what they did finally is they use this con features. They took some con features and then they use SVM classifiers to classify it into objects. Okay. And not only that, they will also give for each of this um, each of this region proposals or each of this window, it will not only try to find the class, but it will also give a bounding box regression. So it, there's also another algorithm called regression. So which finds out what is the exact bounding box coordinate. So the region proposal itself is giving a coordinate, but let's say those coordinates or those the position is not exactly the right position. So in that case, this regressor will give you a more precise position. 
So that is what it is doing. So it is doing two tasks to extra apply bounding box regressor and classify regions with SVM, right? But the problem with this is it is training like this con net training. So there are many such ad hoc um, networks which are there. So it's not an end to end training. For example, the region proposal is a separate algorithm. Then the con net features, uh, the con net itself is a separate algorithm and you need to train it using let's say softmax classifier or something. And finally you have two more algorithms. The SVM also you need to train separately and this bounding box regressor. So like, there, there are like four algorithms. It's a collection of four algorithms and they are not trained end to end. So it's really not, uh, it is not really not the best uh, way of doing it. For example, this ad hoc training has been done. For example, uh, we fine tune the CNN network with softmax classifier, log loss. So this is one of the logs that we generally use. And, uh, but the linear SVM, we use it using hinge loss. So this is done post hoc. Post hoc means they're all separate. The trainings are all separate. So, and then similarly for the bounding box regression and the loss here is squared loss. So it's, it's not a single architecture. So they're all separate and therefore this is not the best thing to do. Also the other thing is training is very slow. It took 24 hours and a lot of memory space. Of course, these are like older um, GPU. So now it should be faster, but still it is a lot of time. And inference is also slow. It takes 47 seconds per image if you use the VGG architecture. Um, the CNN as the VGG, then it takes 20, 47 seconds per image, which is not at all real time. It is best to be real time so that like we can do immediate. Um, so if we have real time system, then we can respond actually. So, and also, um, yeah, I mean, to some extent it was fixed by some other architecture, which means it was made a little bit faster. Let's not go into that. And uh, okay, so another, so apart from this multiple algorithms being there, yes, so that these are, yeah, yeah, so more or less these, um, the problem is basically this region proposal is a different algorithm, ConNet is a different algorithm, and then you have this um, classifier, which is a SVM classifier, and the bounding box regressor. So all of these are separate, so this is not the best thing to do. So, and okay, another problem with that is every time, like you pass this, uh, uh, whatever regions that you got, right, whichever window, you pass every time through this continent. So let's say it gives you 2000 proposals, 2000 such regions or windows, then you pass, then you go through the continent 2000 times, right? It is a waste of resource because many of these windows, they could be overlapping and you're computing again and again the same con features, but Instead of doing it once, we are doing it so many times, 2000 times, which is a waste of resource compute. So that is what the next version takes care of that. How to just do ConNet once and do the rest of the things after that. So that is what this fast RCNN is doing. 